Hello and welcome to TCBA. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to solve this problem of semicircular beam, of semicircular cantilever beam, and we need to find the deflection at this point B using strain energy method. So, for the deflection, we have this load W which is acting. Now, we need to find the mx, that is a moment equation which would uh, satisfy the bending moment profile for the entire entire beam right right from this point b to a so suppose if i take a section at x and i want to find mx at this section now this x is traveling from it is basically starting from this point right starting from the point b and it can travel maximum up to this point And it can travel maximum up to this point if i if i say this is the travel direction so x is starting from this point b at this point and it can travel till this point and it cannot go back now okay so using this x is not a proper way for solving this sum hence we are going to use something called as polar coordinates here okay so we are going to express our mx in terms of polar coordinates which I'll explain you now. So, polar coordinates means we are dealing with r and theta. So, if you see this x can be represented in terms of r and theta, where x is equal to r sin theta, isn't it? If, if we consider this as a right angle triangle, then uh, sin theta is obviously x by r. So, x is r sin theta. mx is equal to minus w into x right if i take mx here it is equal to minus wx minus because this is creating a hogging moment right it is creating a hogging moment here the this w is going to take this beam downwards like this a moment of, of clockwise which is going to take it downwards which gives you a frowning face and frowning face is negative or basically a hogging Face. therefore it is minus wx so we can write this x in terms of r sin theta so it is minus w r sin theta right mx square will be equal to w square r square sin square theta is it so now we'll start with our uh, step one Finding strain energy. Okay. So first is member, which is AB. Second is origin, which is equal to O. All right. Yeah. Now where is O? Second is origin. Origin is the point from where your x starts, but now we are not using x. Okay. Now we have converted x in terms of theta. Now the variable is no more x. X is not going to vary from this point to this point. We are basically varying our theta. So theta is going to travel from this. This is the starting point and it is going to travel all the way till this. Okay. So it is going to travel 180 degrees. So theta is your parameter now. And from where is the theta starting? Let's say theta is starting from O. So our origin is O. Limits are limits are basically from where your theta starts and where it ends. So the theta starts when it is equal to zero degrees, right? When the, when this R is your okay. Let's say this R is basically the one which is following this profile semicircular profile so when r is here at this point your theta is 0 degrees and then it has to turn completely 180 degrees to reach till point a therefore limits are 0 to 180 degrees now these limits are for theta so which is equal to 0 radians to pi radians isn't it then flexural rigidity 
is same throughout the section this ei and then your strain energy u is equal to 0 to pi mx square we already have here mx square dx upon 2 ei now what is dx okay uh, if we consider a straight beam which we have seen previously and if we want to apply this formula for this beam then dx is a very very small portion of your beam okay dx is a very very small portion of your beam so if i have to take dx in this semicircular beam let's say this this small portion is dx okay so and it is forming an angle of d theta okay i'll draw it with a different pen so this is forming an angle of d theta okay so what is this dx dx is an arch right it is an arc here so dx is an arc here and dx can be written as dx is equal to r into d theta this is the arc formula right dx is equal to r into d theta so that we are going to substitute dx as r into d theta this is equal to 0 to pi mx square is w square r square sin square theta into r d theta divided by 2 e r so we can take w square r square into r divided by 2 e r outside we will get w square r cube upon 2 e i inside we are left with 0 to pi sin square theta into d theta okay now we have one formula for simplification of sin square theta uh, sin square theta is okay the formula is cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sin square theta okay so if i have to uh, isolate sin square theta here it will become sin square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2 right 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2 is will give you sin square theta so if we substitute this here what do we get it is equal to w square r cube i'll take this 2 outside so it becomes 4 ei integration of 0 to pi 1 minus cos 2 theta into d theta okay so u is equal to w square r cube upon 4 ei uh, 0 to pi 1 minus cos 2 theta into d theta so it is equal to w square r cube upon 4 ei i hope this is right w square r cube upon 4 ei okay and we'll integrate this now so integration of 1 with respect to d theta is theta and integration of cos 2 theta is sine 2 theta divided by 2 and this goes from the limits of 0 to pi so it is equal to w square r cube upon 4 ei into pi minus 0 right sine of 2 pi is basically sine of 360 degrees which means it is 0 minus 0 minus 0 so what do we get here we get it as pi by 4 w square r cube upon ei this is your strain energy and now step 2 is equating strain energy with e equal to external work done right this formula so we'll equate strain energy as uh, pi by 4 w square r cube upon ei equal to half into uh, your p is basically your load which is acting so here, here it is w into delta so this w and this will get cancelled this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled here so your delta comes out to be pi by 2 w r cube upon ei 
this gives you the deflection of a semicircular beam loaded at the end part B.